يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون These are the three ayat that our beloved prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to recite at the time of conducting a marriage ceremony at the time of performing nikah for someone What is common in these three ayahs that our beloved Prophet ﷺ very intelligently selected for the occasion of nikah <coughs> is a part where the believers are commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fear Allah. Ya Allah. This is common in the beginning of two ayahs. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqaati O believers fear Allah the way it is right to fear Allah And then again in Surah Al-Ahzab Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah wa qulu qawlat sadida O believers fear Allah and say the right word So the phrase, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah is precisely common in these two places, in these two ayah that are being recited at the time of Nikah. And then, the beginning of Surah An-Nisa, the first verse of Surah An-Nisa, that reads as, Ya ayyuhal nasu attaqu rabbakum O mankind, O people, Fear your Lord, fear your Allah, fear your Creator. الَّذِي خُلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدًا The one who created you all from one soul. That is the beginning of your creation. Our beginning is Adam alayhi salam. All of us are the progeny of our father, Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers us to that beginning to allow the reflection to take place that no matter what color we have on our skin or what language we speak or what lineage we hold or what status we hold in our communities What citizenship we have, we have to ascend beyond all of that in order to understand what is going to happen. We're going to unite two people, tie two people in one bond, a man and a woman, in the bond of nikah. in the relationship of marriage whereby these two people are going to live together these two people are going to need to understand each other recognize each other and transcend the differences that inevitably exist But to remind us that we come from the same source, we all are the children of Adam alayhi salam. So, O mankind, O people, fear your Rabb, fear your Lord, the one who created you all from one soul. الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدًا وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا And from, from him, he created his pair, his wife. وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالٍ كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً And from the two, he created many men and many women and spread them forth. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ And fear Allah الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ In whose name you ask each other. Whose name you use to ask each other for help. for assistance. What Arhamah? 
and fear Allah regarding the relationship of womb. The word arham refers to rahim. And rahim is the womb inside of a mother, which is the first place for the being. And that is what connects people together. That is the strongest, that is the strongest form of relationship in this world. Which cannot be broken. Even if someone wanted to sever the ties of kinship, the bond of womb, it cannot be severed. It is a bond that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made super solid that cannot be broken. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah and fear Allah. الَّذِي تَسَأَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ Whose name you use to ask each other. And your relations of womb, your relations of kinship. You understand the, the, the difference of words and the style that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used in one ayah in the beginning and the end. In the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He used a general form of address. Ya ayyuhal nas ittaqu rabba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say, Ya ayyuhal nas ittaqu Allah. He said, Ya ayyuhal nas ittaqu rabba. Because we all believe that we are created by someone. And the one who created us is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know it is Allah. Many others know it is Allah. But there are also those who don't believe it is Allah. <coughs> who believe in their own gods. But one thing that everyone believes is the Rabb, the word Rabb. Even pagans use the word Rabb. The fire worshippers use the word Rabb. The Lord, the Master. So this is a word that is common among all humans. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses that word that is familiar to all. But then, the next part is more important and more peculiar to the believers, to the Muslims. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّقُوا Fear Allah! الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَحْرَى إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَحِيمًا Allah is, is always watching you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always his eyes on you. So you can never hide from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason why the Prophet sallallahu would recite these ayat in every nikah ceremony and despite his habit of reciting these ayat in every nikah ceremony, it is not obligatory, it is not compulsory to recite these ayat because the khutbah itself is a sunnah. <coughs> khutbah for nikah is a sunnah. Khutbah for salat al jumuah is far. So there are, there are these differences <coughs> in the khutbah itself. But the reason why the Prophet would select these ayat and recite them in every khutbah. And just imagine how many nikah the Prophet had performed for the Sahaba in his entire life. <coughs> Probably thousands. So every time he would conduct a nikah, he would perform a nikah for someone, he would recite these ayat to highlight one message and to emphasize the importance of one message and that is you would have to fear Allah if you want your nikah to remain successful. If you want to achieve success in your marriage then both of you 
the two people, the man and woman, were going to marry each other. You need to fear Allah in your matters. The fear of Allah is above any other fear. As long as two people will continue to fear Allah, their relationship will remain smooth and seamless. They will not have problems. But once they drop the fear of Allah, either it is a man, it is a man who has dropped the fear of Allah or lost the fear of Allah or the woman, then the problems will start to begin. Because as believers, we believe that Allah is the one who is always watching us. Law enforcement doesn't watch us all the time. Guardians don't watch us all the time. No one has the ability to watch us all the time. Except Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who's watching us at all times. Whether it's day or night, light or darkness, whether you're alone or with someone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds you again and again that remember, Allah is always watching. Allah is always watching. Allah is always watching you. So develop that fear of Allah. Develop that that sense of consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah is always watching you. So if you have this sense of fearing Allah, then everything will work for good. But if you have lost that sense, and you don't fear Allah, then there's no other power that, that can force you to live by the rules and to make the marriage, to make the nikah successful. There's only the fear of Allah <coughs> that can help you and that can make it, make it happen. Our beloved Prophet said, Arba'un min sunan in mursaleen Al-hinna wa ta'akkur wa siwa wa nikah That four were the sunnahs, were the habits of Almost all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first one, al-hidna. Using hina. And Imam Mutri rahimahullah said that there are some reports that use the word haya instead of hina. So sometimes dots can make a difference. You put one dot on top, it becomes a different word. You, you change the place of that same dot to the bottom, and it will change the word and change the meaning. So, here the word hinna is used in one narration. But some narrators reported that it is not hinna, it is instead haya. And haya means modesty. And all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were very modest. And that's what they taught to their children so, to be modest, to have haya in them. What is haya? It is more than just modesty. Modesty is for the lack of a better word. <clears throat> but the word haya, what it encompasses in Arabic language, in terms of Quran, in terms of the Sunnah of Rasulullah what it encompasses is much more, much more than modesty. So all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commonly had haya in them. And Rasulullah had more haya than anybody else. As it is mentioned in other ahadith of Rasulullah. And there's one hadith in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, He who has lost the haya, 
who has lost that sense of modesty. إِذَا فَاتَكَ الْحَيَاءِ فَفْعَلْ مَا شِكَّةً When you have lost haya, then do whatever you like. Because when you don't have that sense of being afraid of Allah, being modest, and being accountable to Allah, accountability is one of the most important meanings of haya. Whether that accountability is towards your parents, towards your children, towards your spouse, or more than all of that, towards Allah. When you have lost that sense of accountability, then do whatever you like, because there's nothing else that can stop you. So, Rasulullah said that he, this quality was one that was common in all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second, وَالْتَعَطُّ Using perfume. The Prophet had said in other ahadith as well, that from the things of this world, there are very few that have been made beloved to me. And among the things that the Prophet really loved from this world, there weren't many things that the Prophet loved from this world. But one of the things that the Prophet always loved is the good perfume. Al-Itr, Al-Ta'atr, Wasiwa, and using the Siwa, Wasiwa, brushing your teeth. That's also the Sunnah of the Prophet One Nikah. And the last one, Nikah, marriage. Marriage is an institution in Islam. And it's made to last forever. Islam does not believe in temporary marriages. Last Friday, I was talking on the radio show. Every Friday we have a radio show. So the host asked about a question about the family life in Islam. I mentioned that, that Islam believes that the marriage should last forever. Islam does not believe that the marriage should only last for a little time or for a fixed period of time, it should last forever. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ showed in his life. The woman that he married, he stayed with them for the rest of his life. He had to see some of his wives pass away as well. The first wife that Rasulullah married Khadija radiallahu anha. She passed away in Makkah. And that was the year that was called Amr Husn. Rasulullah called it the year of grief. Because he lost his wife. He lost the most important friend in this life that he had. Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha. He loved her the most. And after all, she was the mother of Fatima radiallahu anha. She was the mother of Zainab radiallahu anha. She was the mother of Ruqayya radiallahu anha. She was the mother of Umm Kulthum radiallahu anha. She was the mother of all the daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to remember her even after she was gone. Whenever there was something that would bring back the memory of Khadija radiallahu anha, the Prophet would immediately have tears in his eyes. Anything that would remind him of Khadija radiallahu anha, he would have tears in, in his eyes. And she was 15 years older than the Prophet It's not like she was younger than the Prophet or even the same age of the Prophet she was 15 years older than the Prophet <coughs> But the companionship that the Prophet <laughs> had with Khadija radiallahu anha was the most solid one. She was the companion of the Prophet <laughs> for the rest of her life until she passed away. So Islam teaches us ways to improve our relationship, improve our marriage, and to
to make it successful. And in order to make marriage successful, we should understand that men and women don't always think alike. They're equal, but they don't always think alike. Men may be thinking differently, and women may be thinking differently. In order to, in order to make that house, in order to make that living successful, they would have to work. They would have to make more, un create more understanding among, among each other. And at times, they have to compromise. They have to sacrifice. Both have to make sacrifices. It, it is not just the woman who has to make sacrifices. It is also the man who has to make sacrifices. They both will have to make sacrifices if they want to have peace in their life. If they want to have peace in their marriage. And peace is not just when you are enjoying the moments with your wife by being with each other, but it's also having no peace when you're without. Our Prophet <coughs> whenever he would travel, he would take his wives with them, sometimes all of them, and when it was not the case, the Prophet would use the drawing. He would put the names of all of his wives and then pick one. Or ask one of his wives to pick one name. And whoever, uh, the name of whichever wife would appear, she would be selected to go and travel with the Prophet That was the case with the traveling of our Prophet And at the time of Hajj, when Rasulullah went for Hajjatul Bada, all of his wives traveled with him and they all made Hajj with the Prophet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and practice upon the sunnah of Rasulullah. Ameen wa akhir da'wana. And Tonight, inshallah, we will have our weekly dars of hadith. But it will be after Salatul Isha. Salatul Isha is at 8.30 p.m. So immediately after Salatul Isha, inshallah, we will have our weekly halaqa, weekly Zohar Hadith. We request all of you, inshallah, to join us. Next Friday, we will have our monthly dinner. Although next Friday is not the first Friday of the month, normally we have our monthly dinner on the first Friday of the month. But the reason why we moved it to next Friday is because we're not going to be able to have one during the month of October. On the first Friday of the month of October, uh, a group of us, inshallah, including myself, we're traveling for Hajj, inshallah. So we'll be leaving uh, on October 4th for Hajj from here, Rhode Island, inshallah. So we will not be able to have one during the month of October. So in order to make up for that one, we're going to have uh, another monthly community <coughs> dinner at the end of this month, which will be next Friday. So next Friday, inshallah, we will have, we will have our monthly community dinner and uh, we will have uh, a guest, inshallah, Sheikh Abdul Hamid from Virginia, who comes uh, often, visit us. He will be here, inshallah, next Friday and he will be the guest speaker. So we request all of you, all of you, inshallah, to come and join us next week as well. So again, tonight we will have our weekly uh, dars of hadith after Salat al Isha, inshallah, and Salat al Isha is at 8:30 p.m.